Hi, I'm Dr. G. V. K. Chetanya Rao, your sinus doctor. Firstly, I would like to thank you all for your overwhelming response to my videos. A number of you are asking me certain questions in the comment section below, and I'm making sure. I'm replying to all these comments. So in one of these comments, one of you asked me to speak about the nasal polyps. So today I'm going to make a video on the nasal polyps. So the most common nasal polyps we see in the nose are one, the ethmoidal nasal polyps. The ethmoid sinuses are present right between your eyes and these nasal polyps arise from these sinuses and this condition is called nasal polyposis. The second common variety we see is the anteroconal polyp. This is a polyp which arises from the maxillary sinus right below eye. Usually it is seen on one side of the nose. Number three is the polyps which form because of the tumors in the nose. So today I'm going to only talk about the ethmoidal polyps or the nasal polyposis because this is the most common presentation we see as ENT doctors. So today I'll be talking about what is this nasal polyposis? What causes the nasal polyps to form within the ethmoid sinuses in the first place? What are the symptoms seen in patients having nasal polyposis? What, how we diagnose and how we treat these patients having nasal polyposis? And also how you can take certain simple measures to avoid the polyp formation in the first place. So what is this nasal polyposis? See the nasal polyps are soft, painless, non-cancerous growths which arise from the ethmoid sinuses. As I already mentioned, the ethmoid sinuses are the sinuses present between our eyes. They extend all the way from the front of the nose to the back of the nose just above our throat. So as these polyps start growing in size, they occupy the nasal passageway and also the obstruct the sinus drainage pathways and this is what produces the symptoms in the patients having nasal polyposis. So what are the causes for the formation of nasal polyps? See there is a skin lining the entirety of the nose and the sinuses what we call the mucosal lining. When there is chronic inflammation or repeated inflammation of this mucosal lining the polyps form. During inflammation there is redness, swelling and fluid buildup within this mucosal lining. So as the fluid start building up within this mucosal lining, the mucosal lining which is flat starts swelling up and so it turns into a polyp. And as the fluid builds up because of the continued inflammation or recurring inflammation of the mucosal lining, these polyps grow in size and occupy the entirety of the nasal passageway. So what causes this chronic or continuing inflammation or recurring inflammation? The three most common causes are number one, allergies, number two, allergic fungal sinusitis, that is, there is fungus present in the air we breathe and these fungus usually are harmless. But some patients have allergies to these fungi and these fungi which deposit in our nose and sinus drainage pathways causes inflammation in the area and leads to formation of polyps. And number three is recurring sinus infections. So these are the three most common causes for the continuing inflammation or recurring inflammation in the nose and sinus drainage pathways and this continuing or recurring inflammation is what causes the polyp formations inside the nose and sinuses. What are the symptoms seen in patients having nasal polyposis? See the first most common symptom we see is the nose block. See since the nasal polyps grow in size and occupy the nasal passageway the patient cannot breathe through the nose and since he cannot breathe through the nose he'll have to breathe through the mouth and this causes a lot of dryness in the mouth. The patient feels a lot of difficulty sleeping in the night because he's unable to breathe through the nose and has to breathe through the mouth. He'll have to wake up in between to keep drinking some water and keep moistening his mouth. These patients having nasal polyposis with time develop snoring and also obstructive sleep apnea. The second symptom is facial heaviness and headache. See, since these nasal polyps occupy the sinus drainage openings and sinus drainage pathways, the mucus which is forming within the sinuses cannot come out of the sinuses. 
the mucus starts getting accumulated within the sinuses and this mucus soon turns into pus. This condition is what is called sinusitis. And when there is sinusitis, the patient experiences heaviness in the areas where there are sinuses, be it the forehead, the cheeks, the top and the back of the head. And this sinusitis also keeps progressing and the symptoms experienced by the patient that is the headache and the facial heaviness increase with time. The third common symptom we see is the reduced sense of smell and taste. See there is an olfactory area or smell sensing area in the top of the nose. When we breathe the air, the air has to whiff past three nerve fibers which are present in the olfactory area for us to sense the smell. Since the nasal polyps form an obstruction to these passageways, what happens is that we experience a reduced sense of smell. And the smell and the taste are interconnected. The flavor of the food we eat is because of the smell we breathe. So the patient loses the flavor and the taste of the food he eats. The patients can have nasal discharge coming from the front of the nose or from the back of the nose into throat. And this pus secretions draining from the back of the nose into throat that repeatedly irritates the throat, the patients can experience a recurrent sore throat. In some patients, in this nasal discharge, we can see some blood spots and sometimes the patients can have continuous bleeding from the front of the nose or from the back of the nose because of the inflamed nose and the sinus mucosa. So these are the common symptoms we see in patients having nasal polyposis. So how do we diagnose nasal polyposis? The patients sometimes come to us saying that they have nasal polyps on their own because when they simply lift their nose up, they can see grape-like structures coming out of the nose. Even under simple headlight examination, we can see the polyps within the nose. Sometimes we do a diagnostic nasal endoscopy to have a magnified view of these polyps. To understand the sinus involvement in these nasal polyposis cases, we advise a CT scan of the nose and the sinuses. The CT scan of the nose and sinuses in the polyposis patient is starkly different from the scan we see in the patients having chronic sinusitis. Very rarely we advise the patient to go for the MRI of the nose and sinuses, especially when we feel that the boundaries between the nose, sinuses and the orbit, that is the place where the eye is situated or the, the boundaries between the nose and the brain are not delineated well. In patients who give allergic history, we advise blood tests like immunoglobulin E, absolute eosinophil count to understand the allergies in the patient. Also, we advise allergic skin prick test. In the skin prick test, we can understand what the patient is allergic to so that he can start avoiding exposing to these particular allergens. Sometimes we also do a blood test for assessing the vitamin D levels in these patients having nasal polyps. So how do we treat these patients having nasal polyposis? So on headlight examination or examination under the endoscope, if we feel that the polyps are still in the initial stages, we advise medications like steroid nasal sprays, oral steroids, antihistamines, and if the patient has sinusitis, antibiotics. If the patient gives allergic history and the allergy is confirmed on the blood test, then we advise the patient to undergo the allergic skin prick test. In the allergic skin prick test, we understand what the patient is allergic to. So we educate the patient to start avoiding these particular allergens. But avoiding allergens is not very straightforward. Sometimes the patient may be allergic to things which are always around him, such as the dust or maybe the weather. So for these patients, we educate the patients to take anti-allergic medications regularly and also to try their best to avoid those particular allergens. So in patients who are not responding well to these medications or in the patients who have advanced nasal polyposis in their nose and sinuses, we advise FES, that is functional endoscopic sinus surgery. So how are the results after the sinus surgery? The results of the sinus surgery will depend upon the biopsy reports. See when we do the nose and sinus surgery, for these patients having nasal polyps, we harvest these polyps and send them for the biopsy, that is pathological examination. In the pathological examination, if we see that the polyps are composed of cells like plasma cells, lymphocytes or neutrophils, we understand that the polyps are forming in these patients because of the infections. These subset of patients after undergoing nose and sinus surgery have excellent results. They'll have to come for their review checkups and use medications for 45 days to 60 days and that's about it. The patient will do very well after the surgery. In another subset of patients, in the biopsy, 
that is pathological examination, we see that the polyps are composed of a number of eosinophils, and eosinophils indicate that the polyps are forming in these patients because of the allergies. In this subset of patients in whom the polyps are forming because of the allergies, the journey of the patient doesn't end with the nose and sinus surgery. He'll have to undergo an allergic skin prick test understand what is allergic to, start avoiding these things, use steroid nasal sprays, oral steroids based on the need, oral antihistamines, nasal antihistamines, nasal washes on a regular basis. He'll have to keep visiting us in our OPD so that we can examine him under the endoscope on a regular basis so that we can increase the medication or reduce the medication based on how the patient's nose and sinus are responding to the allergens after the surgery. There is a sub subgroup within these allergy patients who have asthma, who are allergic to pain medications like aspirin, in whom even after the surgery, after using all these medications, taking all the care from the patient's side, there is still a chance for recurrence of polyps in these patients. These patients have to undergo maybe three or four such nose and sinus surgeries throughout their lifetime. So how can you prevent the polyp formation in the first place? Number one, if you have an allergy or asthma, don't ignore the symptoms. Visit a nearby ENT doctor, visit a nearby pulmonologist, show yourself to them, use the medications they give regularly, avoid the allergens causing the allergies in your case and this will keep the nasal polyposis at bay. Number two, avoid irritants. There are certain irritants like smoke, be it from the active smoking or passive smoking, irritants like chemical fumes, irritants like construction material which can chronically inflame and irritate your nose. It is advisable to keep yourself away from these irritants. Number three, maintain good hand hygiene. So keep washing your hands regularly and this keeps the bacteria and viruses away from entering your body and reducing the number of common cold or cold episodes you have. Number four, using a humidifier in your home. In dry climates, especially during winter seasons, the air does not have the humidity or moisture within it. And this dry air irritates the nose and the sinus drainage pathways. By using a simple humidifier at home, we can moisten the air. And this is very soothing for the nose and the sinuses. Number five, using nasal washes. When you go into a polluted environment or dusty environment, once you come back, use a medicated nasal wash or nasal rinse and this will wash your nose off the dust and the polluted particles which are depositing in the nose and sinus drainage pathways. This way also we can avoid the chronic inflammation caused by these particular irritants and keep the nasal polyposis at bay. So I hope you have understood what is nasal polyposis. If you have any doubts about this video, you can mention in the comment section below. I'll make it a point to reply to all your comments. Thank you so much and Namaste.